Did you know that there are more types of magnesium than just one magnesium? There's like heaps of different types of magnesium. And if you want to get all of the benefits from magnesium, you have to be taking multiple. There are also some that have superior, <laughs> the superior types of magnesium over different types of magnesium. And one of the most important things that magnesium is responsible for is like over 600 different chemical reactions in the body. And there are studies that show that Europeans and Americans and Australians, it's like, I think it's 50 to 60% of people, something, something crazy, are like all deficient in magnesium. And one of the things that magnesium is really responsible for is getting a good night's sleep. This is why I've been taking like Eternum Zen, um, which has three different types of magnesiums, the highest quality ones, which is glycinate, citrate, and aspartate. And I basically, I got a terrible sleep last night, so I'm gonna be like doubling up on these bad boys tonight to make sure that I get a really good sleep. If you go to Eternum.com, click in the link in my bio on Instagram, or scroll down on this page, you should be able to get a link to get onto Eternum. And if you just put the, put in Corey, um, with a C-O-R-E-Y, you get 10% off. How good for the code. Also, I, if you guys are interested in cooking the healthiest food and being like the best version of yourself and you guys have sort of like needed to get on track with like eating and stuff like that, you can click on my recipe ebook. That is also in the link below. It costs you $25. You can get the recipe ebook. I'm getting all this good feedback from it because people have just been buying it and they're like, this is so awesome. I've been using all these different things changing all my stuff up and finally sticking to things and oh my god I can't believe I'm eating veggies all the time and veggies taste good. Yes, as strange as possible, you can make veggies taste really good. You just cut them up really small and you got to make sure you select the right ones and put them in the right sequence and my god, next minute you'll be eating the most amount of veggies you've ever eaten in your life. I'm essentially a carnivore vegan. <laughs> half carnivore, half vegan. Carnivore vegan, Jesus. Well, without any further ado guys, I'm going to start this podcast today. We the podcast episode is on the cacao, <laughs> the, the cacao experience. Ah, big flex for that. All right. So, um, essentially, um, why I'm doing this podcast was I wrote an article, and this article is also if you click on on the description below, you will see a link to the article on the website coreyboutwell.com. Um, and I'm essentially going through this so that you guys don't have to go in and actually read it. And one of the main reasons that I wanted to talk about um, cacao, cacao is that like obviously if you guys have been listening to my stuff, you know that I'm interested in meditation. You know that I'm interested in relaxing, recharging, re-energizing yourself through using different modes and methods. And I'm quite into the spiritual stuff because I, I know and I've seen the results and I've done the studies and research that... You know, mind and body is the same thing. How you take care of your mind and you take care of your spirit will show up biologically in your body. And I believe that cacao, the cacao ceremonies are one of the most important things. I wouldn't say one of the most important things. It's just an awesome experience that you can have in order to really like recharge yourself, bond with other people. And it's just super nourishing for your spirit because it's not just the cacao. It's the whole ceremony that goes with it as well. However, I am going to dive deep into some of the benefits of the cacao because it's pretty crazy. Um, when I started doing the research of how, how nut, like how nuts, like really good it is for you, it's actually quite fascinating. And people are just making cacao like crazy everywhere. Like, um, they people are really getting like um, into making this stuff. They they're getting in all these awesome cacao beans and they're starting to make like the the real good stuff and then and sell it ship it out and, and do stuff. But I, what I wanted to do was kind of communicate the ceremony and the benefits of it. If you ever wondering what it is, so that way you're not just like, oh, I'm going to take this stuff and then, you know, oh, I'm wondering what's happening. Oh, I feel a bit weird. I feel a bit fuzzy. <laughs> what's going on here? What is this cacao stuff? So this is basically going to explain all of that to you, which I think would be awesome. So essentially I've been doing cacao ceremonies, I think for the past year, I would say. Um, and every time that I've done them, um, well, one of my first ones, I'll talk, I'll talk about the experience, but basically I've had some awesome experiences, um, with cacao ceremonies, getting really present with close friends and, um, and girlfriends and, um, friendship groups and doing different meditations and things like that. And I've just had some awesome experiences, but just as a note, every time I've done a cacao ceremony with a girl, 
they've cried <laughs> out of like happiness and gratitude. Like every time you just get overwhelmed, like, oh, everything feels so good. And then, then they start crying. I'm like, don't you damn cry. It's starting to make me goddamn cry. Jesus Christ. <laughs> just so grateful and shit. Um, but yeah, basically the main point that I want to get out of this is basically like doing meditation and practicing like cacao ceremonies is the best excuse to get into the gym for your gratitude muscle. And as Oprah Winfrey says, like one of her best, like the one, her reason that she was so successful was because she practiced the skill of gratitude. Gratitude is a skill. Being able to recognize, acknowledge, give thanks and appreciate people um, like really truly and sincerely is an absolute skill um, that you can obtain. And I know that some people that are really good at gratitude have poked me sometimes. I've just been like eating dinner and they've just said something just like, oh, you know, I really appreciate you because of this to the point I've just been like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> like as if I've just been like hit in the chest by some feels and I'm like, oh my gosh. And I've always wanted someone to say that to me because I say that to myself all the time. I'm just like, gosh, damn, you just, you hit me right in the feels there with your, your gratitude skills. Um, and yeah, like it's, it's such a skill. And there's like obviously studies that show that are out there that are like, you know, if you practice gratitude once a day, you're going to be 20% happier. Hectic. So yes, cacao ceremonies are the best excuse to get present with someone and to strengthen your gratitude muscle. When do you get into the gym to practice gratitude? Well, this is a perfect opportunity for that. So let's start. Um, the cacao bean is a phenomenon for nowhere else has nature concentrated such a wealth of valuable nourishment in such a small space. Alexander von Humboldt, some German scientist. <laughs> so just some quick points. Cacao is the most complex food on earth. It contains a number of ingredients that have positive effect on the mind and body. Raw cacao is nature's most magical superfood due to its mineral content and nutrients formed some 600 to 1200 individual individual chemical components. It's a lot of components. Like all superfoods, cacao blurs the line between food and medicine. Hell yes, cacao. Hell yes. So the history. Um, cacao first appeared, produced around 2000 to 1500 BC in Central America. Aztecs, the Mayans, what up? Um, they cherished the bean and the pulp in the bean and made it either into a food or a drink. Cacao was so highly valued that they used it as currency. It was not just a food or beverage, but a pillar for their economies, religions, rituals, ceremonies, such as weddings, births, deaths, and sacrifices. Cacao has been long, sh cacao has a long shelf life, which made it more popular. They could store it and use it for currency for like three, for up to three years, and then eat it or drink it at the end once, it's, once it was almost about done. <laughs> Um, Hernan Cortes seized Mexico in 1519, which started the globalization and a new era for the cacao bean. Cortes wrote about cacao saying, the divine drink which builds up resistance and fights fatigue, a cup of this precious drink permits a full day without food. How good. Um, it was distributed around the world. Europeans added sugar and the locals preferred it bitter. Yes, that's what we did. White people added damn sugar to the cacao, and if you've noticed, like, if you've ever done it before, man, it is the most chocolatest drink you ever damn tasted. <laughs> um, but the locals prefer it bitter. I, myself, personally, actually prefer it a little bit bitter. I just put, like, a little bit of honey in there. Um, in 1815, Van Houten, a now popular drinking, which is a now popular drinking, like, chocolate brand, found a way to defat cacao um, by roughly half and then alkalize it, which was called dutching. Like, so if you ever heard of Dutch chocolate, that's basically where it come from. And it, it allowed... Um, like large scale of chocolate to be produced, um, sort of known as cheap chocolate. Um, so Nestle, then uh, obviously the massive corporation um, with all the good stuff, Kit Kats, whatever, um, found a way to pulverize milk in 1867. Yes, Nestle were the first people to make the, the, the first like milk chocolate and succeeded in making the first milk chocolate in 1879. So like chocolate has actually been damn new. It's been pretty new. Um, this marked the end of the protected sacred medicine value of cacao, including a loss of health, spiritual and ceremonial processes of this treasurable beverage. Um, however, since 2000 to 2012, the world has rejuvenated the much needed value of the cacao. The sadness and the ceremony, sorry, since 2000 to 2012, the world has now come back with all Cacao ceremony is like happening again all over the place. People are using cacao and they're using it for the sacredness 
and they're bringing the ceremony back to communities for spiritual, ritual, healing, and bonding purposes. People are using it now all over the world for um, that reason. It's starting to get a little bit of fire underneath it and uh, get up there. So people are now benefiting all around the world and becoming more connected with themselves, others, and appreciation for the treasurable cacao beverage. Um, we are truly blessed, blessed to be involved in this ritualistic human experience. Yes, it is like quite amazing thing. Until you've done a cacao ceremony, um, it's quite awesome. It, de it definitely has psychoactive compounds in the cacao if you don't heat it up too much. So you can get a little bit whoo, trippy. You know, one of the best ways how I describe it is, you know when you get drunk and you get like out of your mind and like you see things, like things get blurry, you get dizzy, like whoa. Um, and you feel very di uh, disintor Disin disorientated? That's the word, disorientated. <laughs> That's like a tongue twister to say. Um, uh, cacao is like a different sort of drug and it sort of, it comes from your chest. You have all these heart opening valve things that like happen within your heart and you get all these, like the cacao is actually really rich in all these different love chemicals that produce love and different endorphins and you sort of feel like all, all sort of lovey from the chest and fuzzy in your feelings <laughs> rather than like, yeah, as if when you're drunk with your eyes and you, and your nausea, like feeling all dizzy. It's it's real weird. It's sort of if it like it like affects your feels and affects like um, how you feel in your chest. Um, and it's awesome. And it's kind of like well, you know, there's if there's drugs to numb pain like Panadol, and there's drugs to get you like dizzy like alcohol, then there's drug drugs to get you high like weed. There's all these different drugs drugs for different things. It's like well, of course there's gonna be things out there that are gonna make you feel better. Like, like coffee gets you energized, perks your mood up. So there's going to be other things that are going to help you get into love stuff because all the chemicals, everything that we feel is just a chemical, right? And whatever that chemical is, is we can take it from somewhere. <laughs> so yes, it is sort of like it, its own little drug in a way, but it's awesome. And I, I recommend everyone and children to, to get around it as well because it's, it's super healthy, mineral dense. Awesome. Um, so what is in cacao? So raw cacao has been claimed to be the most complex food known to man. The bean is naturally ceremonial in, in its natural ceremonial grade state. You have to get the ceremonial grade stuff is the only form which has all the benefits. No Cadbury or Nestle chocolate will even have a fraction of the nutrients or benefits ceremonial cacao has. They are essentially just pulverized milk, sugar, and cacao flavoring. Yes. You can say it's chocolate, but it's not really. Unless you've had, like, you've gone to House of Health Central Market in Adelaide, or you've gone to a health food store, and you've got the 100% um, dark chocolate, and you've tasted that, or you've just eaten, like, raw cacao nibs and just a mouthful of those, or if you've had some ceremony cacao, cacao um, beforehand, you, you just don't know what real chocolate tastes like. Like, like, you really do not. It's so bitter but rich at the same time and like even like it took me a little while to warm up to 100% dark chocolate and now like I really enjoy it and like it's just so good but it's sort of like it always just tastes like antioxidants like if I was like what does antioxidants taste like I'd be like 100% dark chocolate for sure so what does it actually contain what does raw cacao contain it contains the highest concentrations of antioxidants and magnesium of any food in the world so you could take some of the zen Get the, the good magnesium out of that from Eternum Labs. And you could have a little ceremony of cacao before bed and get the best sleep ever. <laughs> um, so it also has zinc, chromium, theobromine, vitamin C, iron, copper, potassium, tryptophan, manganese, healthy omega-6 fatty acids, serotonin, um, MAO, PEA, um, caffeine, anandamide, calcium, phosphorus, fiber, oxytocin, the love chemical, and a bunch of other minerals and vitamins. So <laughs> what's the common macronutrients for these? Um, so basically in 100 grams has like 456 calories, calorie dense because it's high in fats. So um, 12 grams of protein, so it's up in the protein as well. Um, roughly 46 grams of fat, 34 grams of carbohydrates, 8 grams of fiber, 106 gram milligrams of calcium, 537 milligrams of phosphorus. You can like read the rest and it's got a bunch of other things in there too, which is really great. So basically it's got a whole bunch of calories in there, but you want to have like, you know, that's in 100 grams. So roughly you would have about 20 grams. So um, you're going to have way less calories <laughs> when you're having it, but it's definitely a sometimes food. So mood, bliss, and love. Cacao is a energy and mood enhancer enjoyed by foodists, superfood 
superfood lovers and spiritual communities. Cacao also contains PA, which is what I mentioned beforehand, which is, <clears throat> I'm going to try and say this word and not like embarrass myself. Phenylethylamine. <laughs> I don't really want to get that right. Phenyl, phenylethylamine, phenylethylamine. Yep. <laughs> PAs. <laughs> this is the chemical that gets produced when we fall in love, which promotes increasing focus and alertness. This is the falling in love hormone. There's a difference between that and like receiving love. Um, and it helps, helps it. It's the chemical that helps it um, happen. So anandamide is also, is what is known as the bliss chemical, which as which is an endorphin that the body usually produces after exercise, which makes us feel joy and reduces pain. Uh, nandamide is only found in one substance in the world, one plant food, and that is cacao. So with the mixing of PAs and anandamide, you're going to feel pretty damn good. Um, Anti-aging and blood flow. So cacao has um, been shown to actually rejuvenate skin this is all studies, by the way. Like I've got all the studies on my um, on the article for this. You can actually go look at them. It's pretty pretty nuts. Like this is all legit been been studied. <laughs> um, cacao has been shown to rejuvenate skin, prevent wrinkles, and promote anti aging benefits. It does this by protecting the skin from UV radiation and photo aging due to the specific polyphenols found in cacao. Now that comes from rubbing the skin on your body and eating it. So either or, that does both of it. So you can use that as like anti-aging, rubbing it on your face, like using cacao, cacao butter and all those things. Um, and you can also eat it, which prevents you from like sun exposure, UV rays, crazy, crazy. It's like nature's natural sunscreen. <laughs> um, cacao also shows the possible anti-tumor effects due to highly dense phytochemicals found in the bean. Cacao is one of many food sources of substances that increase the production and bioavailability of endothelial nitric oxide, NOS. So essentially how NOS works in a car, um, if, if you're a car fan, if you've seen Fast and the Furious, like they press the NOS button and the car goes, boom, goes really fast. Um, that happens with their own body and things like beetroot extract, cacao, citrulline, malate, arginine, and these different like types of um, chemical compounds help boost NOS within our bodies. And what NOS does is relax the muscle and relax the blood vessel cells, allowing an increase in blood flow and circulation throughout the body which means like big boners, better brain function, bigger pumps, um, better blood flow and toxin removing within your body. Like you got a whole bunch of good things with this, like belly, better cap capillary optimization, which is like the tiny little veins that go down into like places like your eye and your retina and things like that. So you may be able to see better, who even knows. So magnesium. So studies show that, here we go again, 50% of Americans and Europeans. There we go. That's the one I was looking for at the start. Um, get less than the daily need of magnesium. Magnesium is one of the most abundant minerals in your body and plays a role, plays some of the most important roles for health of your body and your brain. Magnesium is involved in every, in every cell in your body, needs it to function. Holy. Um, magnesium is involved in more than 600 reacts in your, reactions in your body, including converting food into energy, create new proteins and amino acids, um, create and repair DNA part of the process that makes muscles contract and relax, regulates neurotransmitters in the central nervous system, increases exercise performance, helps fight depression, lowers blood pressure, anti-inflammatory benefits, uh, reduce insulin resistance. So yeah, magnesium is like super important and we really don't get enough of it. And because cacao is so high in magnesium, um, it's so high in it and it's in a natural state, our body absorbs it a whole lot better. Um, so yeah, so compared to the blood concentration of magnesium is 18 times higher. Magnesium and antioxidants act directly on the heart combined with nitric oxide, so NOS. The cacao beverage can allow more blood flow and release for an opening up of the heart. Literally, like quite literally, like in the aorta and things like that because of blood flow, muscle reaction and um, some better blood pressure. Um, there you go. If you have not had a large dose of ceremony cacao before, not long after you can really feel your heartbeat beating deeply in your chest. Yeah, you can feel it like when if you've taken like um, ceremony cacao, you know, so after like 15 minutes or so, your heart's going boom, 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 and you can feel it like beat, like real, like, yeah, it's a deep, heavy beat. Um, ceremony cacao is a food source. This means magnesium absorption is increased 
due to better bi bioavailability, which is more preferable to the body and your gut. Uh, this means your body can absorb a higher percentage of magnesium through your gut and into your bloodstream and your cells. So you get more out of the magnesium that are in it because it's more bioavailable. How good? So antioxidants, really important because like actual cacao, 100% dark chocolate and things like that are just like the most abundant food in antioxidants and flavonoids ever. <laughs> like seriously, there's so, so many, it's crazy. Um, raw cacao has been shown to have the most abundant, abundant flavonoids than any other plant. So flavonoids are a type of antioxidant and they have more than any other plant. So they're the highest in that. Um, again, a ceremonial cacao is a food source. The antioxidants are better absorbed with greater bioavailability. Your body can digest, absorb and extract minimum, maximum flavonoids out of this cacao antioxidant powerhouse. How good. So antioxidants, what they do is they protect your body from aging and receiving damage from everyday toxins and stresses. So basically like when you see a cauliflower um, go yellow or like food start to like change color, that's because they're oxidizing, they're getting old, they're aging. Toxins are affecting them in the air, wherever they are. Like if you put it in a place that has shitter air than another area, it'll oxidize faster. Antioxidants, prevent it from oxidizing. What? So they sort of like stop you from aging. That happens like within your body and inside your body, outside your body. Um, that's probably why like, you know, I'm 28 years old and I look like I'm 22 because I, I eat too much damn dark chocolate, man. <laughs> um, and take an NMN. What? Okay. So <laughs> only some of you guys will get that. So, um, where are antioxidants protect your body from aging and receiving damage from everyday toxins and stresses like air pollution, exercise, cigarette smoke, chemicals that you clean with, toxins found on food or other things that make skin contact like soaps, shampoos, dishwashing detergent, things like that, high blood sugar, polyunsaturated fats like vegetable oil, sunflower oil, rice bran oil, canola oil, and margarine. Yes, all of these things create oxidative damage and fuck you up. Um, radiation and sun damage, excessive vitamin intake, too many antioxidants. Yes, you can you can take too many antioxidants, which ends up causing oxidizing damage because it's just too many. Your body has to try to get rid of them, and not enough antioxidants. So if you don't have enough, you got to find that balance there, which is probably a significantly a lot. If you're unless you're eating like a ridiculous amount of antioxidants, you probably need to have a little like a few more antioxidants, like for sure. Like on general, majority speaking, um, antioxidants help your body fight off any of these harmful things that can get into the body, especially allergens, germs toxins and other irritants. If you do not receive a healthy dose of antioxidants or flavonoids, it makes it harder for your body to dismiss inflammatory reactions or uncomfortable symptoms like hay fever, pains, fatigue, bloating, feeling off, sick, or even swollen. So antioxidants help remove all of that shit. Um, other huge benefits, prevents your cells from aging, fights against cancer and prevents it, promotes a rejuvenating effect on the body and skin, Purifies blood vessels and promoting vessel blood vessel health. So helping you to feel and perform younger for longer and reduces blood pressure. Serotonin. So it's got a lot of serotonin stuff in there. How good? Cacao's got serotonin, um, which is the happy hormone. Serotonin is literally what makes you feel happiness in your brain, which converts to melatonin, which helps you get a good night's sleep. Stress strips all of this out of your body, which is like fantastic, which is not fantastic, which is I think it's fantastic to know. Because if you're super stressed and you're not getting sleep, it's like, well, your serotonin's gone. Um, so how can you get that back? Have some cacao. Um, without serotonin, you're more likely to be moody and suffer poor sleep. Hence, healthy serotonin levels help with stress management. Good thing cacao is rich, but rich in substances that make the body produce and stimulate plenty of serotonin. You just want to make sure that you don't take too much, because if you take too much serotonin, then take too much cacao or too much stuff that's got serotonin in it, it'll have the opposite effect. But the likelihood of that happening is very small. Um, anandamide, the bliss chemical. So anandamide is the bliss chemical that, and joy feeling that is produced post-exercise, especially long grueling workouts or runs. Cacao is the only plant chemical that is found that also prevents the breakdown of anandamide. So it has anandamide in it and it also prevents it from breaking down. This means a longer and more common feeling of bliss. Hell yeah, cacao. How good. So yeah, essentially gets you high endorphins. How good. Um, PEA, the love molecule. So that fatty little little million min. <laughs> um, that chemical is released in our brains and bodies when we are in love. Sex and orgasm, euphoria, are the side effect of P 
PEAs. Um, people who are really happy all the time usually have high levels of PA in the brain. Um, I probably have lots. <laughs> um, benefits are increased focus, make time feel longer, less distracted, less hunger. Maybe I don't because I'm hungry as shit all the time. <laughs> um, only found in two foods. One is raw cacao, um, but anything that is heated... Um, or modified destroys the chemical. So if you want to enjoy that love feeling that you get from the cacao and all those things, um, you got to make sure that uh, you don't heat it up too hot. You want it very low. That's why like melting it in a bowl or something like that is like per primo to do. So hell yeah, how good. Um, so what is in cacao? 2.0, so just some rapid things. So tryptophan. So tryptophan helps make serotonin. And tryptophan enhances and aids in reducing anxiety and stress. Again, must not be heated. Heat destroys this chemical. Chromium, chromium and zinc. Large trace elements, elements of zinc and chromium can be found in cacao, aiding in regulating blood sugar growth, insulin health, protein synthesis, sperm production, and strong immune system. <laughs> I wasn't going to share this with you guys, but I'm going to. <laughs> All right, so I've never had a wet dream my whole life. Last night, I had a cacao ceremony with some bone broth. Before I went to bed, I woke up in the morning, woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, what the hell has happened here? God damn. Had like a bit of a wet dream. <laughs> I had to wash my damn sheets. Oh man. The benefits of being a boy, eh? Christ. Well, a man, I should say. God, I'm 28 years old and fucking had a wet dream. God damn. It's probably because I quit masturbating. Well, that'll do it. So, um, yes, how interesting. Um, you can listen to another podcast on that, by the way. I talked about porn and masturbation. I think that's a really handy podcast. It's like five episodes back from this one. Um, theobromine and caffeine. So theobromine is a bitter alkaloid of the cacao plant and is similar to caffeine. It also has similar effects and is only found in the cacao plant. Cacao also has a very low dose of caffeine. So what does theobromine do? Um, brain performance and cognitive function. It increases airflow to the lungs and lung function. Helps with asthma. Improves HDL cholesterol and lowers LDL. Makes a longer, more restful sleep. Lowers blood pressure and can be used as a diuretic. How good. So there's some good stuff in cacao. Oxytocin is another thing to have in it. Um, oxytocin is the love hormone. When giving or receiving love, going out on dates, hugs, being with close friends or family, that can stimulate oxytocin. Um, oxytocin can also have a sexual urge stimulating effect. So watch out. <laughs> Hence, we wet dream last night. God damn. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I shared that with you guys, but whatever. We're all vulnerable here. Um, it all happens. It's just human. It's a part of being human. It's a beautiful thing. Um, so... Next one, MAO, I can't say this as well, monoamine, monoamine, um, oxidase. So cacao has substances that inhibit the MAO enzyme. Psychedelics and antidepressants also have MAO inhibitors, which make you feel happy, improve your mood. Hence, ceremony cacao is a natural mood enhancer, which also has the ability to activate DMT. Therefore, they say that cacao should not be mixed with psychedelics like ayahuasca. Let the plants do their own thing um, instead of mixing it with this because it has the psychoactive compounds in it. This can be the reason as to why the cacao ceremony itself is so important and respected in spiritual communities. It has its own thing, why it was so sacred um, because it helps with just all of that. So modern day cacao drinkers. So due to being bringing back, that, so that was basically it. Well, it's actually in cacao. There's other trace minerals and stuff, but like they're the main things, which is quite a lot. <laughs> um, so due to the bringing back of a cow ceremony of the past 21 years, its prop popularity is beginning to spike again, especially in Australia. How good. Um, people are enjoying the bliss, love, calm, focus, zen, and good energy vibes the cacao ceremony is providing. Some people drink it every morning, others drink it with friends or groups, and some save it for meditational ceremonies only. There are brands popping up everywhere who make their own brew of ceremonial cacao, that we as drinkers can enjoy. Bali is a spiritual place known for its world-class ceremonial cacao. I personally experienced my first ceremonial meditation in Bali. It was hectic. Everything that I'm doing now come from that meditation. Not even kidding. Um, the experience must, for me was actually so powerful that everything I'm doing with my life now comes from the reflections and insights I had during that time. Straight up. Um, I'll get into the actual story in a minute. So modern cacao uses and rules. So there are so many ways to use cacao and like the actual ceremony, um, like the ceremony space, 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 
the ceremony space of the actual drinking the, the cacao chocolate good stuff. Um, here is a list of rules and tips you can use when using ceremonial grade cacao. Really important. So you can add it into smoothies, yogurts, and foods. It's best taken at night for sleep or first thing in the morning to kickstart your mood or focus. The ceremony itself should be protected um, and be held sacred. Um, doing a ceremony with one or two other people is quite intimate. When doing a ceremony, be sure to follow the guidelines below. Do not heat. So I've got like guidelines down below. But so do not heat the cacao. Let it melt using something like a warm rice cooker, warm water, or melt using a glass bowl. I've got some recipes down below, which I'll read out in a minute. Drinking, drinking cacao every day will make you less sensitive to it and its effects quite quickly. Drinking with family and friends can be a great experience. Mixing with psychedelic mushrooms with a small dose is a good time. <laughs> is a good old time. Um, be aware, it's not so much like a plant medicine, mushies, so mixing it with mushies can be a good old time. Um, be aware of the dos dosages. There are multiple doses depending on the cacao. So, you know, some cacaos are like higher concentrated than others for the ceremonial grade. So sometimes like, you know, you you might be having to take 40 grams, you might have to take 80, so it's, it depends. Um, but So it's roughly 50 to 100 grams, depends where you get it from, but it can give you strong feelings or emotions or mood enhancement, which is great. Um, so my first experience, so it was it was nuts. So my first one was I did one in, in Bali, and um, you know, there's different, it's just, I think it's important to note that there are different dosages for cacao ceremonies, and I've done some of the larger ones with my friends, um, and they have been quite awesome. However, it gets to a certain point where it's like, well, I probably don't need any more than this because it's there's like no difference. <laughs> you sort of max out on it. Um, so that's if you haven't ruined anything with heat because you can actually feel quite a strong effect. Um, like As I mentioned beforehand, you don't feel drunk or dizzy, but your heart feels warm and fuzzy. If you're overwhelmed with happiness, gratitude, presence, and love, and you may even experience the cacao flashes, which is cool. So the cacao flashes occur after the ceremony, like after you've done the small part of the ceremony, and it's the part where you close your eyes and allow the cacao to work its medicine. Um, you allow it to, to do what it needs to do. You've set the intention, you've gotten to like a, a space where you're just going to be like really open to let your body think of gratitude and um, be aware of how it shows up in your life and things like that within the meditation. And then cacao flashes can occur. So, um, this is sort of my terminology because I've talked to multiple people who have done cacao and um, been with people who've done mo lots of cacao and essentially in cacao flashes, what we call is like we you, when you're sitting there with your eyes closed is you just start thinking of people just like pop up in your head that you just really fucking love, hey? It's people that you just really like just pop up and they're just like smiling or something and you see them and you're just like, oh God, I love that person. And you're like, oh man, I love that person so much. And the next person pops in your head and you're like... I like that person too. Like, they are great. And then you just start thinking of all these people that you love and they're just flashing up, you're like, just like in your mind and you're like, oh, this is great. And yeah, so many people that I've talked to have all had this experience. So like, you can have the cacao flashes and it's quite beautiful, to be honest. It's, it's really quite beautiful. Um, so yeah, so my first cacao experience was in Ubud, Bali at, gosh, I forgot the place, what it was called. Karma House. Is it the Karma House? Um... And essentially, the layout was like in a room where like, it was kind of like set up for yoga. So there was the person at the front who facilitated the thing. Everyone had yoga mats with like a little pillow. And essentially, we did all this like weird meditation stuff, which was like, for me, it was a little bit too much. We were like, bless the cacao and shit. And I was like, oh God, this is so hippie. <laughs> this is so hippie. And I'm pretty hippie. And I was like, oh, this is so hippie. But whatever, I'll like try to get into the vibes. So try to like soak up the vibes as best as possible. Um... And then eventually we had to like smell. What was really cool was they made us be real present with the cacao. So we did all that weird blessing shit. And then like we held the cacao and we had to smell it. And like as we smelled it, it was like, oh man, that's... I was like, this smells pretty good. Like I thought it was just going to be super bitter, like the 100% dark chocolate I have. And I started drinking it. had these little chunky bits in there. And what they do is they made us drink it real slowly and like feel it in our mouth, through our teeth, like swish it around. Like and really feel like the warmth and the textures and the nutty flavors and like all the different types of like the bitterness, but the tang and the anti... Like we just try to taste like absolutely everything for it. And then swallow it and then feel it going down your esophagus and feel it warm and then filling up your belly. So we had to like do all of that, like take it in as mindfully as possible, feel everything with it to really like get us like into the zone. And then we did a few other things and then basically we like laid down and the facilitator guide us through uh, meditation for like 50 minutes. Um, 
So just a quick note, if cacao is prepared properly, properly, it's the most chocolatey thing you've ever experienced. Yeah, like when I was tasting, I was like, this is the most chocolatey thing I have ever tasted. Like if you just melted a bar of Cadbury and just like put that in your mouth, it doesn't even compare to the amount of chocolate it has like from the actual cacao. Like it is so much more chocolatey than that. Um, so yeah, it was actually amazing. I was like, fuck, this tastes killer. I can't wait to drink all of it. I was like drinking it a little bit faster than usual. So <laughs> basically, um, in the meditation, I kind of just wanted to get clear with what I wanted to do with my future. And I set that, set that down and it was interesting the way the Vasil lad was talking about things because that's how it happened. But I could hardly hear him because I was playing the music too damn loud, but whatever. Um, and basically, we got to the state where we were like meditating and I was setting that intention and like literally, swear to God, like 10, 15 minutes in, dive deep into like all these things that I wanted to do with my life. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm so clear right now. I kind of like woke up out of the meditation, sat up like looking around like, oh God, I need to go write this down, but this is so awkward. I can't move because everyone's just laying here like zombies smiling <laughs> with their hands on their chest. I'm like, oh God damn it. So I laid back down and then I'd like go back into the meditation. I'd start exactly where I left off. The next minute, like literally... 10 minutes later, I'd jump back up again, like, oh my gosh, I need to write this down. I need to get out of here. I'm like, oh, there's still like 20 minutes left. It happened like three or four times I did that. And it was sort of like the link on a chain, like every time, like adding a new link to a chain of just getting deeper into like my meditation and what I wanted to get clear of. And I remember like, as soon as it finished, everyone was standing up and I was like, oh my God, yes, we can go. I can go write this down. Like, remember it, Corey, remember it. Don't you damn forget it. And the facilitator was at the side and I kind of looked at him. He like put his hands together in a prayer thing and gave me a little nod. And then I like put my hands together, gave me a little nod back, put my shoes on and I flexed it out of there as fast as I could. I jumped on my scooter and like sped home. I was like, me down Ubud, the main street, like flex it, got to my, um, got back to the Airbnb, got my pen, pad, pen and pad of paper out. And I wrote like, I think I wrote down two pages of everything that I want to do in my life so quickly. <laughs> it was ridiculous. And after that, I was like, oh, yes. Like the relief of after doing a really long piss, like that's sort of the relief it was. And I was like, oh my gosh. And literally all the stuff that I'm doing now, as far as this podcasting, as far as this coaching, as far as like trying to make impact on the world, setting up like business stuff with like friends and all these other things and having like mastermind groups and doing this really cool shit that I like doing. Um, is all starting to come to fruition. Like, it's crazy. Like, I'm literally doing everything that I had out of that meditation. So that's sort of the power of just like, you know, I think in general, of just setting a time and space. Like, as Joe Dispenza says, like, you know, if you set an intention for what you want it to be, then you put yourself into the emotional state of that intention and you try to be that now as what you'd like to be in the future, then you'll manifest whatever you want. Like Joe Dispenza's done all the science and studies for this. Like it's actually legit happens. Manifesting shit is legit. <laughs> you got to do it. But how often do we give ourselves the permission to actually sit there and take the time to do those different things? This way, I believe cacao can be so important and so powerful, especially with the ceremony, because it's the best anchor and it's the best, best excuse. It has like little opening things, little psychoactive compounds that taste absolutely delicious. And it gives you this perfect state to really think about and get into this high performance part of your brain because it activates all the real good stuff like brain and cognitive function. So you can get into your prefrontal cortex, which is the front of your brain, your thinking brain, in order to think about all these things and really understand them and get clear on them and get so clear and excited and pumped for them that they will happen regardless of whatever you're doing because you just you just have to do it now. Um, that's essentially what happened, like my experience with it. And I think that's fantastic. But this... Uh, meditation that I did in Bali is just one experience you can use it for. There's all different types of things you can use. You can use it for. You can put it on top of bananas if you like, and give it to your kids, and then have cacao with your kids, and everyone will be like, mm, 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 love and bananas and chocolate, mm, mm, mm. so good. Um, so some other experiences you can do is like setting different intentions to explore, um, like opening your heart, loving yourself, loving others, feeling bliss, and wanting to express gratitude. Getting clear on emotional and mental blockages and patterns. Trying to get more in touch with the best version of yourself. Hell yeah. Um, balancing masculine and feminine energies, for sure. Masculine pushing, feminine pulling. Um, creating a time for meditations or just stillness of the mind. Enhancing your own creativity and expressing yourself through your own work or art, which I think can be fucking awesome. Um, breath work. Movement like yoga or dancing, relationship exercise with a partner, or to build closer bonds with your friends, which is great. So, 
the recipe. So I'd like to just quickly go through, just real quickly, a, a quick recipe of how you do it. So some equipment that you might need is like a knife, cups, mugs, a mixer, a blender, or a rice cooker, um, a bowl, a saucepan, and a kettle. So basically to melt the cacao, you can heat up water and into a gentle simmer in a saucepan, and then you can put like a glass bowl on top and then put the cacao in there. The best thing that I do is I chop up the cacao first. I chop it up so it's very fine, it's all crumbled, so it's almost like a powder. Put it in there, it melts straight away. Or if you like, you can actually just put it in the mug and then you can put the mug in the simmering water and then that, that'll do it too. Um, you can also place cacao um, into the bowl and then like stir until it's uh, melted. Or you can put it in a rice cooker um, with either a bit of water or whatever you like in there, but only have it on warm. You don't put it on hot and that'll eventually melt it. That's a really good one to do it slowly because you're stirring it, especially if you're doing it for multiple people. It's awesome. You can also use a blender so you can melt the cacao first or you can just put it in the blender with some liquid and blend it up, up to you. Um, you could do a little bit of warm liquid, like you don't, obviously don't want it too hot because you don't want to destroy the stuff in there, so up to you. Um, add cacao, dry ingredients and liquid to the blender and then blend and serve it. Um, you can use a mixer, I like a mixer, like getting it in and go meh, so like a mixer is like you put it into the bowl and mix around. Um, you can even use that in the rice cooker too if you needed, but it might damage the rice cooker, so up to you. Um, but yeah, you just slowly add the liquid and you like slowly add cacao, slowly add the milk, slowly add if you're using milk or water, whatever it is to use that. Um, but the mug's pretty handy too. Like if you're just doing a single serving, you just put them in the, the still water, melt it very slowly, mix what you need to mix in there, put it in again, stir it around um, so that it all gets nice and um, warm and tasty and smooth. It should be like trying to make it as smooth as possible as a goal. And it depends how thick you want it. I've had it sometimes where it's been so thick we had to eat it with like a spoon and you're like, oh, your whole mouth is like, whoa, chocolate. And I've also had it where you like drink it and you're like, oh, this is like really nice too. Um, so you can serve cacao on top of pancakes, bananas and yogurts, which is like great. As I mentioned beforehand with kids, you can get creative with it. Um, the dosage, so basically, this is like a standard dosage, is anything over 42 grams is a full ceremonial dose. 20 grams works well for a lot of people. Eight to 10 gets a little activation. And then, yeah, obviously anything over over 20 is for if you want to get a little bit deeper into that experience. And I have done like a hundred gram serving before. And to be honest, it makes you just feel sick. <laughs> You're just like, oh God, it's so chocolatey. Um, so yeah, so anything above 40, I've done like, I think like for me, I think 40 to 60, depending on the cacao you have, can be awesome. Um, so you can use a whole bunch of different other things to mix with it, which also have awesome effects too. So vanilla powder, which like pair with it perfectly. Vanilla powder, I'm pretty sure, increases blood flow. Um, cinnamon does really well because it prevents huge ins insulin spikes. Helps you like feeling like, ugh, if you do get insulin spikes. Um, cacaoine or chili helps with the absorption of the cacao in the bloodstream really well. Like they recommend a lot of people who do cacao recommend putting a bit of cayenne pepper in there. A cardamom, nutmeg, macaroot is awesome because it also has an help with an aphrodisiac effect. It's good for your hormones. Um, coconut sugar, delicious for sweetening. Agave, natural sweeteners like monk fruit, manuka honey, maple syrup, or oat, almond, or coconut milk, which is awesome. Um, or like a grass fed, cold, raw, pressed organic milk. You could use one of those bad boys too. Um, so the basic recipe is chop up the cacao finely with a knife, um, choose a method of uh, preparation, so like the mixer or the bowl for melting it, melt the cacao and mix it in, like mix it slowly together, and then um, you may need to take the bowl on or off a few times to heat occasionally because you don't want it to get too hot, so you may need to take the bowl on or off if you're melting it. Add in a half a cup of milk um, of your choice, slowly mixing as you add it in. Add in the other ingredients, like... Um, Honey or maple syrup, a teaspoon of salem cinnamon. So I only use like a teaspoon. A teaspoon of honey and maple syrup, a teaspoon of salem cinnamon, um, a teaspoon of medicinal mushrooms. So like you can use lion's mane, reishi, ashwagandha, things like that. Half a teaspoon of cayenne if you like to spice. One big pinch of Celtic salt and as much liquid of like water, oat milk, almond milk or coconut milk as you like. And then keep mixing slowly um, with the heat down as low as possible until it goes smooth. And then serve into a cup and the setting and set the setting to get ready to start the actual ceremony. Um, so yes, that's how you sort of get it ready, and that'll serve like one to two people. I kind of like to do like, you know, one serve of honey is like per person, basically. Um, one teaspoon. So how to actually do the cacao ceremony. So here's how you do it. So there are many ways to perform a ceremony, whether it's just for you, by yourself, with a partner, a friend, or a group of friends or family members. I believe the main benefit and purpose of a cacao ceremony is to strengthen your gratitude muscles. Mm. Um, Gratitude is a skill. The more we practice, the better you get. Uh, again, um, a cacao ceremony is like having the best workout in the world for gratitude building. 
So here's the format I like to actually structure the cacao ceremony. So if you're going to do it, this is how I like to structure it. I like to do the acknowledgement of the current time and space. A uh, big thank you for everyone for being here. Acknowledgement of the cacao, its history and purpose, actually talking about it. What's in the cacao, so what's actually in it, which has the effects. So people know what to expect. Explain how the cacao ceremony strengthens gratitude. Set the intentions. So talk about the gym, like <laughs> the, the gratitude gym. Um, but it's good. That's it. You know, it's the perfect excuse to do so. Um, set your intentions for whatever you want to feel. So like just to say some common intentions would be like, you know, I want to feel really present. Um, I want to like let myself open up. I want to express so much gratitude. I want to think about my family. Um, I just want to, um, yeah, feel, re feel really zen. Um, I want to have, I want to get clear on what I want to do with the future. Um, I want to feel as much love as possible for you. I want to feel as much love as possible for me. That would be like some intentions. Um, explain how to perform the ceremony and then how it's going to be closed. How do you actually do it is after you've set those intentions is take a sip, um, notice the actual food. So I've got like, uh, not notice the food, notice the cacao in your mouth. So drink, notice and express gratitude and then repeat. So that basically means that everyone says, one person says what they're grateful for, everyone takes a drink. Um, and then you notice the texture and the flavor of the um, cacao and how it's moving. And then um, and then the next person drinks. Uh, next person says what they're grateful for, then everyone drinks, then you notice the cacao. Um, so once you've finished this and you've gone around and everyone, you get to the point where you've literally finished the drink. So you go to what last person says and you finish the cup. Um, is then you have some time for like, you know, five to 20 minutes of basically closed eyes time. So you just say, everyone get really relaxed, um, close your eyes, you can lay down, sit up, up to you. And then like you talk through a little bit of a med meditation and then encourage people to talk about what they're seeing and feeling with their eyes remaining closed. And then when it feels right, close the ceremony. So you just allow people to have that closed eye time because it's taken, you know, 10 minutes, whatever to drink the cacao. Then it takes like 10 to 15 minutes to kick in. And you have a little bit of time of just like actually being with your eyes closed and just thinking about all the best things ever and expressing as much gratitude as possible, get your heart in the best position. And then you can talk without being fear of judging because you got your eyes closed and no one's like looking at each other and you're just like, what's the best part about people sharing what they're seeing is that it triggers stuff in other people. So you're like, hell yes, oh, I'm actually appreciative for this. And oh my gosh, I'm appreciative for that, which is really important. So where can you get Ceremony Cacao? House of Health. Central Market Adelaide has millions. <laughs> they got like all the good stuff, multiple types, which is really good. Um, the Source Bulk Foods online, so they have like the bulk option. Sacred Earth Medicine is a powerful cacao. Cacao Mama is like the original powerful cacao, like the original bad boys. A lot of the stuff I got off of this article and this podcast come from them. Um, cacao Ceremony and Events in Australia. So there's a link on my um, uh article which is called fly cacao spelt with k's <laughs> instead of um cocos so like little c's <laughs> like c's that's spelled with k's um fly .com, which has got like you know events you can actually go to one um go and do one of the meditation um cacao cacao meditations woohoo so here is i'm just gonna do the last part of the podcast thanks for listening guys is i'm gonna actually just quickly like step you through um a cacao meditation of what i would say for the intro to get it started so I also tend to make these meditations up as I go along, I have like a brief kind of outline of how I like to do them and notice what they feel right. And what I'm sharing this with you with these guys is because like, because I've done quite a few cacao ceremonies now is we just keep having good results after good results and great experience. People come up after me afterwards like, oh, thank you so much for that. That was fucking awesome. And I'm like, oh, good. That's good. Thank you for participating. Like there's so much love going between us right now. This is great. Um, so my go-to for a cacao ceremony sounds like this. Take a second to get comfortable sitting or laying down and close your eyes. That is not the start. <laughs> that lines around the wrong way. I have to edit this different thing. So I would say take a com... Uh... Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. So this is what I would say post once we've actually finished drinking the cacao. So what happens is obviously I mentioned before and you go around, everyone drinks the cacao has their sips, once they've done and you've closed, you go, all right, guys, now it's time to get into the meditation. And this is what I'd guide, guide people through to allow us to feel and experience the best cacao ceremony possible. How do I get confused there? So it goes like this. <laughs> take a second to get comfortable sitting or laying down and close your eyes. And let's take 
a couple of slow, relaxing breath, breaths. And then I'd pause. Allow yourself to feel the cacao working through you. First notice the taste, the texture, the feeling in your body and your chest that the cacao has left. And then really try to allow yourself to feel the cacao tingles rise up within your heart. And then I pause. Notice your heartbeat. Is it slow, fast, or hard? Really try to notice your heartbeat. Notice that your heart has connections to your brain and your body. Allow yourself to really feel your heart and appreciate all the work that it does for you. Really feel your heart. Try to really feel it. Notice that your heart is so much more than an organ. It is where your love and your gratitude literally come from. Try to feel and fill up your heart with the feeling of love and gratitude. Feel it pulse throughout the blood within your body and center up in your heart and really feel that. When you're ready, really try to and allow yourself to expand the feelings of appreciation. Really start to feel that rise up and then let that expand throughout your whole body down your arms, down your body, into your legs, up through your brain, in your mind, and really feel the love, gratitude, and appreciation and how it comes from your heart. And then I wouldn't say anything. <laughs> and then just let people sort of go through. And then while people are thinking and and like feeling the different things, I would say, like let's say a few minutes would go past or 10 minutes. I'd say if anyone would like to share anything, please do so. And then one person would be like, oh my God, I'm seeing the cacao flashes. <laughs> Something like that. So you allow some time to keep going and then like you allow people to talk for a while and then you make sure you want to close it because you want to close it professionally. Um, so just because it's like, is respect out of thing because otherwise you just phase off and be like, oh, well, no one closed it. What are we doing? Are we still standing here? So at the end you go, all right, guys, we're going to come to a closing of the ceremony. Thank you so much for participating into this sacred little space. Um, I'd like to thank every single one of you for being here. I'd like to, if you're intimate, I'd like to thank you for being here. Or you can just say, I'd like to thank, give thanks for myself just for having this space. And yeah. Enjoy the rest of your day or whatever it is at the end, just to close it like that. Something like that. So yeah, guys, that is what I would do for the cacao meditation. That's all the good stuff with, with the cacao. <laughs> I think it's like quite an amazing thing. Last night I mixed cacao and bone broth together. Don't ask me why. It's like an absolute abomination, but it worked for some reason. Real weird. Um, but yeah. If you found this podcast beneficial, please share it with someone. If you're interested in cacao stuff, please share with someone. Use some of the tips. Go get some of your cacao. Go to House of Health Central Market and get some real good stuff there. Um, and if you also want to learn more about this, just reach out to me. Send me a DM. Um, if you have done the cacao, if you used any of this stuff, please let me know. I'd love to hear about it because I actually love like doing all this stuff and figuring it all out. So some huge love to you guys. A big reminder. Again, Zen, Eternum Zen, all the different magnesiums bunch of other real good stuff to help you get some good sleep. I've been using it on my aura ring, literally had the scores. I get better scores every night. I take it. How good. So big flex, big love, and thank you for your presence and time for listening to this podcast to learn something new about some new stuff. And yes, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Goodbye.